everybody, welcome to Croydon Vision once again. Hope you're having a lovely day. It's really nice and hot outside, isn't it? So we have quite a bit of stuff for you today. Um, I'm going to be starting off making Aisha's strawberry fruit cocktail trifle. She's kindly given me her recipe, so I'm going to be showing you uh, how to make that today. And then later on, we're going to have a fun fact binding quiz um, with Faye and Catherine. So a lot to uh, to take in today. So I'm going to begin making trifle. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So as you can see, uh, this is our, our trifle that I just made earlier. The strawberries on the top, uh, cream underneath, uh, followed by cake, custard, and jelly. So to begin with, the ingredients, you will need hot water, 400 milliliters. Strawberry jelly, about two packets. Fruit cocktail tin, so mixed fruits. That's one tin of that. Squirty cream, which is one bottle. Trifle sponge, uh, fingers or cake. Um, and ready-made custard, one packet. So roughly 500 grams. And of course, a packet of fresh strawberries to decorate the top bit. So this should serve roughly about four people. So to begin with, we're gonna start melting our jelly. Right, so I'm just getting the pot. Bowl. bowl, it's a bowl. It's a bowl, it's a pot, a bowl, a bowl. <laughs> Um, and then I'm getting my jelly as well. Now, I know I said roughly about 400 millilitres of hot water, so if I look at the back of the jelly, it does say uh, 285, but it depends on the size of the pack. So today I'm gonna to use about roughly 570 millilitres for this jelly. Right. Wearing gloves makes it a little bit more tricky, but you can yeah. always use a pair of kitchen scissors if you've got them as well. It's a bit hard to tear open. Now, on the packet, it does say it's good to separate the jelly into small cubes. Oh, it's very sticky. Sorry, I'm just going to kindly just pull it apart. So there are indentations in jelly, and uh, Natasha's just pulling it apart on the indentations. It used to be a job, job that I always really okay. enjoyed being given as a child. Children really like doing it. I must say, it smells nice and sweet. Ooh. On a day like this, where it's nice and sunny, I tell you, jelly is quite a good thing to have. So I'm almost done with the first pack. I'm literally just tearing it apart in, from the squares and putting it in the bowl. Okay. Oh, and now it smells of that really jelly <laughs> strawberry smell in here. Again, we wish we could share the smells with you. <laughs> smell the <aroma. laughs> Now I'm just opening the second packet of jelly. I'm going to cheat this one because my hands are a little bit slippery. I'm just using a little knife just to poke a little slice in there. And then I'll open it up. That's not cheating. You can always use a knife to open something. <laughs> it's using your initiative. I'll move that to one side there. Right, and again, I'm just doing the same thing with the jelly. They're in squares. So I'm just tearing the squares off and putting them in the bowl. I always got told that eating jelly was good for your nails, kept them nice and bendy. Oh, wow. I don't know if that's a real fact or one of those old <laughs> wives' tales that you get told. Well, I must say it's good for exercising your hands and your fingers and my arms as well. It's a good form of exercise, there you go. You get a good uh, pudding out of it and you get to exercise your limbs while you're making it. So that's all my jelly, all separated. Now I'm going to add some hot water to it. So the next step is to dissolve the jelly in hot water. So we have, as we've got the hot water boiler, used that rather than a kettle, but a kettle's fine. Yes, kettle or a hot water boiler, they do the same thing. Just heat your water up till it's nice and warm. So I'm going to add, in total, the requirement was 570 millilitres. Uh, on the packs for two packs of jelly. I'm going to add a little bit less than that because after this, we're going to add a tin of fruit. Now the tin of fruit has juice in it, so that makes it a little bit more, uh, adds a bit more liquid to it as well. So I'm going to stop there and now I'm going to get the spoon now and just mix in the jelly and it falls quite clumpy, quite clumpy. 
Uh, yeah, unfortunately, trifle is not a pudding that travels very well, so it won't be one of the ones that we're sending. Um, just a little bit too difficult to get it there without with it being still looking good. It still tastes nice. And so our water isn't actually boiling, Bob. It's about 84, 85 degrees, so it doesn't have to be um, fully boiling. It just has to be very, very hot. Um, uh, as Natasha's stirring it, just round and round in circles, can you feel any difference as you're stirring it? Yes, um, when I started it was very kind of clumpy, uh, solid, stuck together. And as I'm stirring it feels a bit lighter, a bit smoother. You can feel the jelly dissolving in the water. Does it feel a bit sticky? Would that be a good description? Uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, a bit sticky. A bit sticky. So you, you just keep stirring until the jelly is dissolved. And it's getting there. It is getting there. I'd always say, if you think it's not done, you can always stir it for a bit longer. It's going to take the jelly a while to set, so <laughs> don't worry about over-stirring it. So you just keep stirring, as you can see, there's some jelly at the bottom bit. It's almost getting there though. And once that's fully dissolved, then we can add the tin fruit to it. The hotter your water is, the quicker the jelly will dissolve. So if you've actually got boiling water, it will work better. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's true. And our water would have cooled down quite a bit because we prepared it before we went on Live. screen. Yeah. <laughs> so it takes us a little bit longer, but that's true. The hotter the water, the better and quicker the jelly will dissolve. Now we just keep stirring. If you get fed up with stirring in one direction, go back in the other one. How <laughs> much five actually, the other side. But you, you can actually spin with it as well. It kind of gives you a bit of exercise on the body, the upper part of the body, you know? Just spin while you're stirring in the bowl and then go around the other way and you can just make it fun. Make it fun. <laughs> <laughs> I found I can only stir in one direction. The other direction feels weird. Um, I don't know actually. I think we do a bit of both. Uh -huh. It's exciting actually if you stir either way. I might swap hands because you can feel we're doing a lot of work on that one hand. There we go, that's good. And I'll go a bit further around the other side. It's almost done. There's a few more squares to dissolve. Just swapping over the spoon again to my right hand. My strongest hand is my right hand, so I like to use my right hand quite a lot. And as it's dissolving, it's just almost feeling like water. Yeah, very, very liquidy. I just keep stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring. If you have a microwave at this point, you can cheat. Oh. <laughs> you can pop it in the microwave for about 30, well, 10 seconds at a time and just stir it again. <laughs> <laughs> that speeds it up a little bit. So the jelly, there's only a few little bits left. But I might start to add the tin fruit in there just to show you that process. Okay, and then we can get on to decorating. Oh, I'm excited about decorating. <laughs> so Actually, I'm excited about eating. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's quite a lot here to eat. <laughs> We'll send it to you virtually. <laughs> so we've done step one, which is dissolving the jelly in the hot water. Now step two, I'm going to stop here. There's a little bit of jelly left, but I'm going to just show you step two, um, which is adding the tin fruit into the jelly. Okay. Um, so you can drain the tin fruit, um, but this one we have is uh, raspberries and syrup. So that adds a little bit of flavour to the jelly. So um, I would recommend, it's completely up to you, draining it or pouring it in with the, the juice in it. It adds a bit of flavour, it's completely up to you. But we're going to add it in today. Um, jelly is taking a little bit of time to dissolve. But I'll just show you the process. I'm going to pop it on the table here. The juice is already coming out. It smells nice and sweet. So currently just opening the 
So if you had a, a nice ring pull, it'd be a bit easier, just pull it open. <laughs> Today I felt like using my arm, so I thought, why not? Let's go, go for it. All right. So the other reason we put a little bit less water in was because we knew we were going to be putting the syrup in from the raspberries. Mm -hmm. So that just means that we knew we'd need a little bit less liquid. Otherwise, you'd have very, very runny jelly. All right, so as you can see, this is full up to the top. Now these are ra raspberries and syrup. So we're just going to pour that in. And you can see the raspberries just fall out. Oh, look at that. Bit by bit. Now you can have any fruit you like, you can have peaches, strawberries, we just went with raspberries today. Or you can add a mixture of fruit cocktail in there. And you can just stir that. And that will help those last little bits of jelly dissolve if they were not quite enough liquid. Yes, of course. Um, and we've got an ask, uh, unfortunately, no, this is a non-sherry trifle. <laughs> it's Aisha's recipe and she hasn't got sherry on the list of ingredients. No, no, but that is an alternative. You can add that instead. If you want but to. you could use any jelly you wanted and any fruit you wanted to make it the right um, flavours for you. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted a raspberry or strawberry trifle like we've got, use that. If you wanted a lemon trifle, you could do a lemon um, jelly in it uh, and maybe use a lemon cake as well. Yeah. Or a lime jelly and a lemon cake. Depending on, the depending on what you want. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. These are the what you need. <laughs> Vague ideas, but you can change it up. If you've got a tin of fruit cocktail in your cupboard, that's the right thing to use. Yes. So that is step two. Okay, we've put the fruit cocktail in the jelly. Um, so you let that cool down for about 30 minutes or so before putting it in the fridge to let the jelly set and then it gets really solid. Okay, but well, we've kind of done that already, so we're going to show you one. Um, How long do you leave it to set in the fridge? The fridge, um, I would monitor that, I would say between 30 minutes to an hour. Um, our one we left overnight, so it's a bit more solid, but I would, I would say between 30 minutes to an hour, um, test it, and if it is a bit longer than that, then keep it. Okay, right, thank you. I have Catherine as my assistant here helping me. <laughs> right. So this is one that we did earlier. Um, so you've got the jelly already set with the fruit cocktail on top. Okay. So I'm going to decorate it for you now. So we're going to be moving on to step uh, three, um, which is of course the sponge cake or sponge fingers. Thank you, Catherine. So. got a cake that I'll be using today. Yeah, I should made cake yesterday. Yeah. Um, and we managed to make sure it lasted till today, which I'm really impressed with. <laughs> no one ate it. <laughs> so with your cake or sponge fingers, either one, um, I'm going to take a knife and you can slice it. Slice it in half or in, in three um, and just place it on top. So I'm going to ask Natasha not to cut that way. <laughs> ah, fingers wise, yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, Natasha is cutting it. Um, ooh, I'm height wise. Height wise. <laughs> height wise, height yeah. wise in three ways. She was cutting with a knife towards her, which we don't want to fill in a first aid form. <laughs> <laughs> so if I ask yeah. to cut it down, on cut it downwards instead. My bad habits from home. Let me cut this. <laughs> Just for safety, but you can yes. still cut lengthways through the cake. So I'm cutting downwards instead. Just, just so I don't have kittens <laughs> over here. <laughs> so we'll um, if you were using um, trifle sponge uh, fingers, then you would have needed to soak them. And I should suggest soaking them in something like an apple juice, because uh, trifle sponge fingers are a little bit drier. They can be dry, yeah. Um, but because this is lovely fresh cake, I think it just looks like it's a... a a plain sponge cake, no additional extras. So I'm going to slice downwards and I'm going to just continue to slice. So Natasha's cutting it into pieces probably about one centimetre thick. Yes. It's a rough guide. I think it goes completely, whether you want that thicker layer of cake or a thinner layer. 
Okay, I'm going to go with a one centimetre type of layer. I will say, I like to use, uh, if I'm doing a lemon based trifle, I might use a, um, what's it called? The rolled cake with lemon in it. Swirl. No, no. <laughs> a lemon roll with the lemon filling in it, and then it goes a bit fizzy when the jelly hits it. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I don't eat cake today. I actually don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> if anyone does know, please comment. <laughs> yeah, please let me know what, what cake I'm not remembering at the moment. And the original slice that I cut, which is a big one, I'm going to just cut that again downwards so we have that kind of even layer across the top. It does smell Swiss good. roll. Ah, Swiss roll, okay. <laughs> Sorry, lemon I'll Swiss roll. <laughs> if I'm doing a lemony cake. 12 <laughs> or some kind of cake. Right, so that's the sponge layer that we've done on top of the jelly and the tin fruit. Um, so that's the first layer done. Second layer done. Second layer done, yeah. There's now a nice even layer of cake on top of our really solidly set jelly. And because we had fruit cocktail, most of it um, floated rather than sunk. The raspberries are a little bit heavier and they're sinking behind me. Ah, so a hint there, if you try fruit cocktail, it kind of rises a bit in the jelly. Yep, Rob, uh, Bob, very good answer. If you're, if you're wanting a very traditional trifle mm -hmm. and you're using sponge fingers, they should be soaked in sherry rather than apple juice. Oh, ah, okay, <laughs> all right, Bob, oh, thanks for that. Have a, have a go, Bob, let us know how that goes. We're definitely going to want to see pictures of all these trifles you're making. Yes, send them through. Now, we're going to be moving on to the custard. So the custard is going to be pouring on top of the uh, cake. Um, so I'm going to get that now. So we have got ready-made custard. If you're feeling ambitious and want to make your own, feel free to do that. <laughs> and there are other brands available. I'm not going to say which brand it is, but you can use any shop-bought pre-made custard. Any one. <laughs> And we must job. So I'm just going to pour the custard now on top of the sponge cake. I do like custard. It's quite a, a quite a nice that spread over there. It's almost like you're giving the the sponge cake a bath. In a way, <laughs> I think it deserves it in this hot weather. Give it a bit of a bath, and you just keep pouring it over. So you, we're using a whole big carton of custard? We are. We're using Ooh. one big carton of custard. We'll, we'll put up the method after the event, but I, I did write down about 500 millilitres, one, one, one box of custard. Should do the trick. Okay, and that's all on top. That's the custard done. Put these two over here. Ooh. If you want to, you can spread the custard around a bit. So, it's so Natasha's using lower. the back of the spoon just to spread it out to cover right to the edge. Fill in those gaps to make sure that cuts. We've got a, a little question here from Mary. Yeah. Um, she says, does it have to be fresh cake or can one use slightly older cake? Um, you can use older cake, Mary, as long as you soak it in something just to make it a little bit softer. Yeah, you don't want it to be dry, so that's, that's, that's right what Catherine said, it is soaked. It's, Gives it that soft flavour when you eat it. Okay, um, so that is, I think, what layer are we on? One, two, three, four? Four if we count the fruit, three if we don't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's count the fruit. So we're on four layers. <laughs> um, and then we're going on to the last layer, which is cream. Oh, my favourite, I love cream. Okay. I see that, no, I'll eat the cake, but you need to keep that cream away from me. Oh, I don't like cake, but I like cream. So we've got the squirty cream. Uh, one bottle of squirty cream, again, you can pick it up anywhere, as the Tesco, Sainsbury's, they all do the squirty cream. So just give it a bit of a shake before you use it. And if you wanted to not use squirty cream and give your arm a bit more of a workout, you can use um, whipping cream and whip it up really nicely until it forms peak and then spoon it on. We're not doing that today. No, we're not doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm going to stand up for this one just so I can get the aim right. Um, so I'm going to press the top. So bit. before I ask you this question, yep. are we going with rosettes or are we doing lines across the top? How are you decorating with I'm your squirty cream? I'm with lines. Okay. I like doing lines. Lines just going from the top all the way down the bottom. 
So if you're doing lines, you don't need to have it directly down. If you're doing rosettes, you need to have it pointing more directly down. You sort of push down as you ah. finish it to get a nice peak. Catherine can be my voice. Let's <laughs> see. So I'll start with the squirt. You can hear that nice squirting already. So I'm just going across in a line, picking it all up. Just going all the way down to the bottom of the triangle. So just having a nice layer of cream. Again, depending on your preference, you can have a lot of cream. I'm going to add a bit more, just a little bit more. <laughs> a little or... bit more. So I'm going to start again from the top and uh, do the line again from the top. There we go. This looks lovely, doesn't it? Nice, bright decoration. And then all the way to the bottom. Bob's keeping us on our toes and telling us what we should be traditionally putting on next. Oh, what's <laughs> that, Bob? What's that? So traditionally, we should have almonds and glacé cherries. Oh, that's nice. And the glacé cherries should definitely be cut in half first. Ah, <laughs> okay, Bob. All right, it's traditional trifle. So I'm going to just you move these utensils out of the way and just tilt a bit towards you all. So that's the top of the trifle there with cream. Very lovely, very lovely. And Anna says that she'd have hundreds and thousands on top. Oh, that's sprinkles. Work, but that's very pretty in terms of decorations. We're very not nice. quite finished though. No. So the last bit, again, this is completely up to you, is the decoration on the top. So we've gone for strawberries. Um, so I'm going to get the strawberries and put them on top. But you can have hundreds and thousands, you can have cherries, you can do whatever you want to put on top. Uh, but we've gone for strawberries today. So this is our plate of fresh, fresh strawberries. So what I'm going to do is just cut them in half and then just place them on top. So I'm going to get them nice. So whilst you're cutting, I've got a question that I missed earlier. Yeah. Um, Danielle says she thought the sponge went at the bottom, but we've got the jelly at the very bottom. So if you're doing a really, really traditional trifle, You'd have your sponge right at the very bottom, your jelly on top, so it then soaks into the sponge, mm -hmm. um, and your fruit in there. But we have got Aisha's recipe, and because she makes fresh cake, rather than using sponge fingers, we pop the cake on top of the jelly. This is Aisha's special recipe. So it has a slightly different than a traditional one. Just yeah, it's definitely very healthy, Glenn. It's got fruit in it. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a small portion, it's very healthy. Otherwise, I think there might be a bit too many creamy bits and bobs with the custard and the whipped cream. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget when you're cutting the strawberries, just to cut off the green leafy bits at the end. So Natasha's cutting it into slices. You could cut it into slices, you could cut the top off and then cut it in half. Yeah, you can cut it. It's up way. to you how you cut it and how you want it to look. So it's, it's your choice of how you display it. We're only going to have small portions, honestly. We're not going to eat it all in one go. <laughs> I know we've got two completed and we'll have some jelly done by the <laughs> end of the day. End of the day. <laughs> So I'm just cutting them in, because they're quite big, these strawberries, just cutting them in three slices and just placing them on top and then I'll uh, we'll do that as the last one. So again, it's completely up to you how many strawberries you want on top, what you want to put on top, but this is Aisha's Strawberry Fruit Cocktail Trifle. That's a tongue twister there. <laughs> Ta-da! So if you want it to be less healthy, you could use chocolate on top. Oh, chocolate. So I have done a trifle once where I think I used a Terry's chocolate orange wow. and put the segments on top around oh the outside. Oh gosh, very creative <laughs> there. It's up to you to be <laughs> as in, uh, creative as you want to be and do what you want to do because it's the whole, whole idea of this is the recipe. We will, as Natasha said, it will be up on our Facebook page at the end of today. It will be. Um, mm -hmm. So you can bake along, you can rewatch this video and see all the steps and that is the full trifle recipe and we're very pleased that Aisha gave us a really nice simple yes. set of instructions. Yes definitely. Maybe the next time I see you I might be a bit bigger. I've got a lot of trifle to get through. <laughs> but thank you very much for watching the trifle making. Um, 
and uh, we're going to go over to the quiz section. But I'm going to say, can you give us a little bit of time? I'm going to pop the Be Right Back screen on because we've got to do a bit of tidying up now because oh, there's a lot of food on the table and we don't want that there when we do a quiz. So get yourself ready for the quiz. All you need is your brain and some way of noting down the answers on your end, whether it be on pen and paper, on a computer, a tablet, a phone, a braille note taker, a dictaphone, however you want to make a note, you're going to do it your end rather than typing in the comments. But do have a chat amongst you as you are whilst we change things over. We'll be back. We will be back. <laughs> 